Tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into the um, industry. Uh, okay, it's a long story because I started out when I was 17 actually. Um, I had a group at the time which I was the lead singer of and our group was called The Lyrics. And we did our first recording for the great, the late great Mr. Cox and Dodd. You know, that was like the, the Motown um, of reggae then in Jamaica, equivalent to the Motown from the USA. Every artist in the business today, from that time, passed through Studio One. Studio One was the, the studio where everybody wanted to go, wanted to do them first recording, and I was happy to do. I did about five songs. Most of them were semi-hits, so to speak. But you know, there, there it was it was like the springboard, and it was very nice to know that we were accepted in Studio One because I feel like you had to be good enough to be accepted there. You know, so it gave you a, a plus. And who were some of the artists that influenced you at the time? Well, at the time, I must say I was um, listening to artists like Slim Smith, my man of past long time, the great Bob Marley. You know, uh, there was something about the wheelers. Like when we went to a dance, to studio one, Cox News have him set him, Sir Cox and Downbeat. When you go to a dance and Bob Marley come to the dance, everybody go flock him. It's like you could have seen from a youthful day saying was something exceptional, you know? So I will look up towards them artists, they're really for true, you know? But... The inspiration um, to sing was not nothing that I got from anybody, really. I found out before I even knew anything about Bob Marley. At about eight years old, I used to sing in bars. My father used to put me on his lap, and I sing for him, bridge and them, and then pay me. And by the time I reached 12 years old, I was writing songs, you know? So it's an inborn thing. But then the recording field now led us to Studio One, and it's a Bob Marley, Ken Booth, Alton Ellis. But then, you no, know, when, when we get when we record some tune, and you know, whenever I wasn't really um, dealt with properly, so we lost, we got frustrated. So you know, we never continue the car cocks in the early days. That good money recorded, but they never used to like let off no money. So you know, most people can't tell the same story. You know, so kind of withdrawing thing and such a recording thing coming like it's too much to take too much out there. And then we see this child star Dennis Brown. Like um, when we was about nine year old, I'm come on a, a fundraising show, they used to call it Nuggets for the Needy. Right? And Dennis Brown at about nine year old come and sing a tune and say, Solomon was the wisest man, he didn't know the secret of a woman. You know? And when I said, this little boy on my enemies, I said, King Solomon. You know? I'm so and so melodious. So from them time, I said, like, you with your toughie. But Dennis Brown became a favorite. I mean, like, I never saw nobody in a Dennis Brown shoes for me. You know, what I love so much, you know? Dennis Brown was like the voice of Jamaica. The sweetest crown that come out of Jamaica. He never flopped yet. Him can, Dennis Brown up on a show. People wait at 20 hours to see him. Guy just have a melodious. He was a, a special artist. You know? So what, what was it about you? Because, I mean, you came out of a lot of conscious songs. You didn't you do mm. love songs. No, that's my oh, early days at Studio yeah. One because they, yeah. they weren't the hit songs that I did. We were group singing. It's pure girl, girl love song we used to sing. That was the influence because I know that it's a carryover from American kind of music that influenced the Jamaican music. You see what I say? So, you know, we used to listen to Otis Redding, Impressions, Drifters, you know, Platters. You know, see, I'm a little with my children. Every the shades of night is falling. It's twilight time. Out of the mist, your voice is calling. It's twilight time. You know, that was a, 
a platters music and the music there was the music where you want to train your voice off or you can't tell them man you're tough you know you want can't sing like them you know so we used to listen to them tune there but then now the influence to do cultural thing came because of the um seeing the Rastafari fate as a real thing so you know the, the younger artists them in you know, my time them, them were singing love songs and things so that was the influence at the time but we start to trod certain way you know I go to studio and say okay the man and man a smoke her forget the vibes and then when the man a smoke her him start to bless the man that walking not in the council you know some little psalms have to say so it get interesting you want to know why and you start seeking the man and say I just lost you I don't return my sire you know and read the scriptures and say where Christ have come to David family and we say I just lost the 225th descendant of Solomon and Sheba so I said this is not coincidence so we said, we can't make what happened to our people them 2,000 years ago happen again, the Christ come and you, and you reject him. So we just said so that is a part for follow. And it lead to conscious lyrics, conscious and positive movements. So, you know, it's his majesty inspire me through the love of the faith, you know, and so we left on the right track. Was there some desire to also um, link with Africa to retain those? Uh... Yes, because... Um, like the Black Star Liner, what I wrote. It was an elder man to me when I just started outside the faith and I wear up on me. I said, you know, nobody has sing about Marcus Scarby and the Black Star Liner, you know. If you write a song like that, you know, you would come to me, I go in that direction, you know, I leave from the love song thing. So I'm going to get a little book named The Philosophy and Opinion of Marcus Garvey and start to read about something that Marcus say and thing. So when I, when I read about the Black Star Liner, sh- shipping fleet, where I start, I say, ah, but the rest still didn't tell me something before I go away. He said, get me interested now. He said to me, sir, you're like an idea. He said, seven miles of black star line coming in the hour. I said, I'll leave you with that. So I go away and the next morning I come and say, boy, I'm reading Marcus Gary book and I just write the song. And I sing him, say, you wouldn't know, sir, you're powerful enough. You understand? So it's so that come about because the rest of man hope over the years, I said, like we see Africa like this new Jerusalem, you know, because in the kingdom age we're living in now, Christ come 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. I would have said that here is where Zion is because Zion means the city of David. But through the union of Solomon and Sheba, the, the kingdom moved from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. And the Bible tells you going to have a new Jerusalem. So we have said him re-establish the kingdom now. And, and the David covenant come into effect through Ida Selassie. Who, you know, through many like the first, which was um, the son of Solomon. He established the kingdom in Ethiopia, right? And when he did that, is out of that said family line, I still have to come through that union of Solomon and Sheba. The throne shifted from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. So we said, fulfill the Psalms that said, His foundation is in the holy mountains, the Lord of the gates of Zion, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. For glorious things are spoken of the city of God. I'll make mention of Rehab and Babylon to them that know thee. He said, Behold, Philistia and Tyre, with Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion it shall be said, this time that man was born in her, and the eyes himself shall establish her. Meaning that now, the kingdom shift now. So out of Ethiopia in the kingdom age, Christ will come instead of Jerusalem like original. See? That's how we read and over stand. So like, during the 70s, I mean, reggae music was very political and very spiritual. And part of that was because of the Rastafarians who were now coming into the music. Yeah, and political in the sense where in um, reggae music... Um, is a vehicle that transported the cry of the oppressed people in Jamaica. So why these songs came about now, the Rastafarian evolved and everybody see it as something anti-governmental or whatever and thinks it's a revolutionary movement. So because of that now, them start to treat the Rastaman discriminatively and them, them Rastaman go to prison for a little spliff and 18 months so that the first offence and they was treated like dogs. So out of that now, man sing about them tribulations and you know, and all them things that, is that bring about them kind of sound of political protests and uh, sound anti governmental, whatever, you know. Is reggae music lost now? Lost? Yeah. Um no. Well to me you now, people try to change reggae music and call it different names, like we're coming right here about jungle and garage and Jamaica now that's about dance and all kind of thing. But as Bob Marley said, feel it in the one drop. The one drop now is a real authentic reggae sound with every drum and bass. See? Where that music cannot die. So, 
No care what people go and come, them still have to come right back to it. But has the message, the political message and the spiritual message of reggae been lost in today's Oh, if you mean in that life? sense, in a, um, in that sense, I would say so. Because there are only a few artists who are still carrying, and I said carrying the torch. Because over the years now, I think because Rasta get accepted to a level now, the plight of the people is not so devastating like before. So people don't want to sing about no weapon more no more. Let me get less judgmental. You understand? So it cannot get like sound like it watered down. But you have artists like um, Lucian of them. I don't think it watered down, so to speak. You know, cause you have some like a fire lion like Sizzle of them. Well, them come and them, them, them sound confused sometimes because them switch from the real thing sometimes to some ordinary thing or, 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 or things that sound derogatory for Rastafarians. But the thing about it, sometimes an artist come and them feel challenged by the dancehall artists them who have gimmickry as the top thing. So sometimes them feel them have to compete with them. So them lower them dignity and try to compete and do some things that is not known to be done by Rastafarian artists. Okay. See? Yeah. But anyhow, they don't they don't they really don't lose focus. Myself I can speak for myself and I see a lot of artists who don't lose focus because of the fact that we still know there's a market for this music and there's people who need to hear what we have to say. You understand? So them can we don't bow then. And you have artists who not go bow no time at all. And I still have to say, none of the artists them of nowadays don't reach it could have been Sean Paul. Them get Grammy or America love the crossover thing and thing. They don't accept the real reggae thing yet. But no artist not reaching a Bob Marley class yet. You know what I say? For sure, I say, is Rasta really carry it? Bob Marley make it international. So, so we know as Rastafarian singers, me personally see it fitting for follow the trend where said by the man them where come make it instead of bow out. Because, it's not, you know what I mean, we can sing love songs, we can sing all kind of things. But I don't think, no, we should be doing anything derogatory as Rastafarians, you know. And then, no, you know, it surprised me too. Some man I do some tune in a class, some man somewhere, and no man them not dance, I dance to it more than the man them. Like, them love what the man them has said about them. You know, see, there's some nasty thing them has said, take body, girl, take body. You want to walk not you for take body, girl. And you say, oh, girl, go on over that. Them tune that's never supposed to even record. It's a shame that your children should have even turn on a radio. Or go or a pass somewhere and hear it on a tape record or whatever, you know. And it's that they might try to bring reggae music to. But it's not reggae music, that. That's some like a dirty thing. A reggae means the king's music. And you can mix up that to the king's music. And, you know, the Bible says, as well as the singers and the players of instruments shall be there. They couldn't be talking about those guys who promoting those dirty things. In a God kingdom, you must have to some positive, the songs have to be something relating to the faith or religion or something to be among the right people. You understand? In terms of um, the roots of today's urban music, um, as yeah. well as reggae music, it really it's, it's comes from, from Africa. From Africa, because it's the um, with us reason earlier enough. A lot of the people who um, was brought as slaves to the Caribbean in the slave days, in the time of the slavery, was from mostly Ghana, 
to my understanding, like the Ashanti tribe. They find most of the, most of the people in Jamaica, they go to um, Ghana and see people look just like them. You understand? So we know now is that um, it's inherent then because people have it in them. So when a man, like certain words in Jamaica, I don't, I've never been to Africa, but certain words like Uno, where we mean more than one, is an is a African word for mean more than one. You know, so people come, the slave people, them come, them try to beat it out of them, use English or beat out the right words. Them. So some of them just, them couldn't beat out. So it's still some man, them couldn't beat out the culture and the spirituality where we get from before parents then, so to speak. And you know, I was doing some reading the other day and I found out that in terms of Rasta music, mm. the actual tradition of Rasta drum and, yes. and everything, it comes from a tribe in Africa called the... Rural people. All right, because you know yeah. them, them called Ayabingi, which is and that's what I tell you. So them couldn't beat out everything out of it. So some slave master must have passed it on, and it keep passing on till people have stole it, you know. And it have to be there as part of our life because there is no doubt that the black people originated from Africa. Because the Bible go back far. It tell us uh, the three sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth were actual. Um, they, they actually became different nations themselves because when Noah's son um, him took Africa region. So the black people are called Amitic people and the brown people are Oriental people called Shemitic and the white people are called Japhetic. Them, so them kind of people is them um, inhabit Europe. So it shows you say, you know, the black man land is Africa. So any black man you see all over the earth, him four parents must have come from Africa. Because Europe is European. White people and it's, it's come our people migrate and have children in other place. It was not our original land. It's Africa is black people land. Well, I thank you ever so much for the interview. There's so much questions I want to ask you, but the guys yeah. are... Okay yeah, I have the show tonight Russian and some man want me to do some music thing. But it's always a pleasure to speak to people and anything concerning, you know, um, our, where we come from and what we want to do. Positive things. But as I say, maybe our next time we can continue. Whatever we want for cut short or nothing, you know. It's yeah. just so it go. Yeah. Oh, this is the time that the father allow us to so And not three Fred locks have. So I couldn't be, you know. So I have to do some other things. Okay. And I'm really yeah. glad that I could help you out. Oh, I really. thank you very much for your time. You're yeah, welcome. Uh, Give thanks for that. Yeah. And a good note, I want to say the last word because we must have time to say it. We ask you know, our people now to stay positive and very conscious. Not unconscious and conscious because in you know, this world we live in, uh, Satan seems to have more prominence. Satan seems to be very strong. Our people get caught up in uh, vanity and material things. That they kill them own people through drug wars, through turf. You know, all over the world it's happening. So one of the people them know say, if we kill off one another with the feet for one purpose, you know, Satan and the people them who we check as the enemy would have win because them don't have to fight because we don't have to fight ourselves. <laughs> you understand? So we want to stay nice, love one another. You know, we want to live to go to old age, have children and grandchildren, can visit Africa and go find out more about the roots, you know? I think positive is not all about some money thing and you live in England and you think it's glory. When you think you're never, you're living in hell. You understand? As Bob said. Right, my love quote Bob Malika. I think he was a great a lyricist, dancing, and I say that he wasn't great because it's only him could express him song them not them way really, you know. But you have better voices than him, but them couldn't call the people like him, you know. And, and, I say, and what would you say to those people to learn about artists like yourself? Well, what well, I tell them say, um, it's a step towards learning more about them own self too, you know, because it's good for know your roots and your culture and know say, so, you know. You have people who come from a little island like Jamaica come and spread such a great joy, you know, and just a small little island like that and we have so much power. There must be something about what we're saying, you know, so we are interested in knowing and trying to learn more about Africa, learn more about the black people. We don't want them to be no racist. That's out of the picture because we can't carry this family feud for the rest of our life, you know. Because the white man is still your brother, you know what I say? So we don't have a family feud. That have to done. Racism is something that I'm totally against. You understand? So I try to say, every vine must stick to them own fig tree. So Africa, for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. That's the point.